So it's best practice to always check your sprue for any defects before commencing with the build. You don't want to find out a bit has fallen off at packing or some parts are mismolded halfway through the build. Everything here looks to be in order, so let's continue. Now before we get into the meat and potatoes, I thought I would first let you know that this is the first episode in yet another painting series. This time it's going to be a Tyranids painting log or series. And we will be starting with the Tyranids from the Leviathan box. Obviously. <laughs> Let's kickstart this assembly process by carefully cutting the parts off the sprue. Instead of cutting off all the components at once, I prefer to take it step by step, closely following the instructions. Some people like to cut the entire lot off the sprue in one go, but I can't quite bring myself to do that. My OCD says no. Oh, by the way, to cut the parts off, I use a pair of Tamiar sprue cutters or plastic cutters. The best cutters I've ever used, and I can't recommend them enough. So here we have the first part of the sprue. It's a rather large part, isn't it? This is the main body of the Screamer Killer. It looks to be very well moulded, and the detail is rather good. But before we can assemble it, we need to tidy the part up. We have here the return of Andy the Knife. Long time viewers will be familiar with Andy, but this is the knife I like to use for cleanup. Lots of experts and top men say it's far too big and not really suitable for purpose, but I've worked with Andy for a lot of years and don't want to give up on him just yet. Now the real reason is I keep forgetting to buy a new hobby knife. Can anyone out there recommend a good one? Do Tamiya make a good hobby knife? I bet they do. I hear a lot about X-Acto knives, not X-Facto knives. Exacto knives. Are they any good? I think they might be an American thing though. Do they even have them in the UK? So using Andy the knife, I then clean up all the sprue attachment points and mould lines. Again, it's always best practice to use a nice new blade. This one's about as sharp as a beach ball, so I better swap it out after I film this. So here are the other parts required for step one of the build. There's another half of the body, the back crest thing, which looks like an alien's head to me, and this toenail. It reminds me of the scene from Jurassic Park when Dr. Alan Grant is explaining the raptor claws to that little twat. And he slashes at you with this six inch retractable claw, like a razor. So as this is a push fit kit, it has the little pegs dotted about that are for you to push together to get the fit, hence it's push fit. I always find I can never squeeze them into the holes as they always just seem too tight. So what I like to do is cut them off at an angle. I believe the professional term is chamfer, or is a chamfer a type of beetle? Anyway, here's an easier to see example of my chamfering work. You will find the shafts slide into the holes a lot easier if you give them a little pointed tip. They also line up better this way as they slid into position rather than being brute forced in. Now some people have been known to cut their shafts off completely, but I'm not sure there's enough of an obvious seam there to make sure those parts locate properly so I don't dare cut the entire shaft off, just in case I need them to locate. To glue our bits together, we need some glue. I have a pair of glues here, and both are polystyrene cement. But one is thick, and one is thin. The thick is for gluing big parts together, and the thin is for fine detail work and wicking. We'll get to that later. Again, I'm using Tamiya, as it's by far the best out there. Now sadly I've seen a few of these Screamer Killers built with a big gap down this back section. I don't want such a gap and made sure I put plenty of glue in and gave it a good squeeze. I also held it for a fair few seconds to make sure it wouldn't open up again. 
there's still a fine line where that seam is, so I wicked in some of the thin polystyrene cement. It's brilliant for this sort of thing. It also has some other handy uses, which I shall show you later on. With all those pieces stuck together, we have this, a one-legged Tyranid monstrosity. It feels like this kit comes together rather quick. It also makes a nice change to build something big and organic for once. Painting it should be fun. Now, I want to know if you enjoy building your kits. Do you prefer it to painting? Let us all know in the comments below. I'm a big fan of the assembly phase, by the way. Oh, and the painting phase both the YouTube channel and the actual painting itself. So next up on the operating table is the other half of the leg that's already attached and what looks to be an organic flux capacitor. Can the Screamer Killer travel through time? Maybe we should make a little Marty McFly to ride on his back. A bit like the Rancor in the Bubba Feet TV show which sucked by the way, and or was much, much better. And with the leg half attached along with that flux capacitor which turned out to be his crotch plate, this stage is already complete. Seriously, his crotch plate thing reminds me of my old cricket box. You wouldn't want to leave home without it. Now I have to admit I do miss my cricket playing days. We won the league, you know. I'm going to have a look and see if I still have the photos. Ah, here we go. I think this is around 1999, the last year of my under-18s cricket league career. Luckily, we won the league that year, and I still have fond memories of it. I do wonder what half of those guys are doing now. Also, I was considerably less fat then. We need to work on that. So here we have our next parts. It's the second half of the Screamer Killer's other leg, his left leg, I believe, and his toe. Be careful when you cut your toe off the sprue so it doesn't go flying across the room, never to be seen again. That's happened to me with quite a lot of parts over the years. I travel into the warp, I think. Now with those parts cleaned up and assembled, you have the leg ready to be attached to the Screamer Killer. Amusingly, the Screamer Killer's feet, or hooves, whatever you want to call them, remind me of tree trunks. They're big hefty units, to be fair. You wouldn't want to be kicked by one of those. And with that sub-assembly attached to the main assembly, you have this. Now it looks like some sort of shelled Pokemon. Am I thinking of Bulbasaur? Is there a bigger version of a Bulbasaur? A Bulb Turtle or something? Are there any Pokemon experts in the comments who can help me out? Now sadly, Pokemon became a thing just as I was growing out of such things. Oh, probably around the same time we won that Cricket League. Cricket. It's my Norfolk accent coming out there. I do apologise. Cricket. Anyway, I need to shut up about that. Anyway, Pokemon. Pokemon. The original ones back in the day were great, you know, like your Bulbasaurs, your Squirtles, your Pikachus. But nowadays they just look weird. Like a polygon with an eye. Or a book with a pair of legs or something. They're very odd. I don't like them. Are they really the best they can come up with these days? I like the ostrich with three heads. I think it was called a three-headed ostrich. No, I'm only kidding, it was an Ostrio. Now after the previous assembly, we are left with a big gaping hole. You can get your whole finger in there and it doesn't even touch the sides. I'm starting to wonder if I've missed a part out, as surely his tiny head can't fill up a massive void like this, can it? Let's find out. Ah, so this is the first part of the head. What amuses me is that the head is bald, but those crests on the side remind me of hair. I'm sure there was someone on TV who was bald and had hair at the sides, wasn't there? Who am I thinking of? Has anyone got any ideas? Ah, okay, so attaching the first part of the head has filled up a large portion of that hole. Thank God I didn't forget a part, but I guess there's still plenty of time for that. You can only get your little finger in the hole now. Have any of you guys ever had the misfortune of assembling a kit 
and getting halfway through and then realizing you've missed a part out. It's annoying when you have to pull the parts together that have been glued. That is if you aren't able to just cram something into position. But I guess that's what instructions are for. And we all know that nobody reads those. Here we have the parts to finish off the Screamer Killer's head or face to be more precise. Again, these are very small fiddly parts, so be extra careful when removing them from the sprue. Don't break them, or even worse, lose them. With those tiny two little pieces assembled, you have this. The backside looks like some sort of weird vinyl player, and the front reminds me of the Predator's face, especially the scenes from Predator 2, where you can see in the Predator's throat what is clearly a woman's vagina. Shit happens. And with that sub-assembly complete, we can then add it to the main assembly, giving us this. I think it's looking pretty damn good myself. It really is turning out to be a rather large lump indeed. Not something you would want to run into in a dark alley, although without arms it is a little less intimidating. Now this got me a thinking. If a T-Rex fell over, how on earth would it get back up? They had tiny little arms and I can't see how that would help push them back up off the ground. Did they use their tail? Or did they flip themselves onto their feet like Bruce Lee? I used to have a body like Bruce Lee, you know? So the next parts we have to take off the sprue and clean up are these rather large claws. They really are very long indeed. They're also a bit curved and a bit pointy, and they remind me of something. They remind me of a twirled moustache. Whatever happened to moustaches? Was Tom Selleck the last man on earth to have one? Does anyone grow them these days? I feel we need to bring the trend back. There was no sub-assembly to do with those moustaches, I mean claws, so we got those all stuck on pretty sharpish. I was a little concerned I would put the wrong claw in the wrong hole, but I found out you can't really do that as they have specific shaped pegs, to prevent idiots like me cocking up I imagine. Lucky. Now what I've always noticed is I always seem to cock up one stage of a kit, without fail, apart from when I don't. Like gluing something in the wrong hole, gluing something on upside down or backwards. But so far with this screamer killer, we haven't actually had any issues. Touch wood. Right, so this is pretty much a repeat of the previous steps now. It's just the pair of arms or claws that go on the monster's other side. The passenger side or shotgun. And does anyone know why they call the passenger side shotgun? I think it has something to do with stagecoaches. With those two large claws attached, we have this. I believe the Screamer Killer is now fully complete. All that is left to do is some fiddling with his base. Let's have a look at that. Now I have to admit, hold on, when I was looking at these instructions to build the Screamer Killer, it's a fair way back in there, I was absolutely convinced that that base there was an oval. But on further inspection, you can see it's a 90mm round base. Again, it would have been a good idea if I'd have read the instructions first. This is the base you need. It's a 90mm round base with two little holes for the pegs on the Screamer Killer's feet. Interestingly, the date on here is 2017, so either this was designed a long time ago, or this base with the two holes has been used before in the past. Or they just drilled holes in old bases. What do you guys think? There's also a large number on there. 99,379,999,070. Which I think is how much in dollars these sets are going for on eBay at the moment. Bloody scalpers. You can then plonk the Screamer Killer down onto those holes via the pegs in his feet. Make sure you use glue here, as otherwise it might fall off. Unless you want it to be detachable. I don't think I've ever seen that done with monsters, apart from flyers. 
Now remember when I said the glue has other uses. This is one of them. Sometimes there's some very fine seams that you can literally just melt off with the glue. Just give them a bit of a rub out and they magically disappear. It's easier and tidier than using a file. I just go over the miniature at the end and catch any that I see. Here's what the Screamer Killer looks like next to a Contemptor Dreadnought. I have to admit, it's turned out considerably bigger than I actually had in mind. I expected them to be around the same height. Those claws really give the miniature some width. It's going to be a pain in the ass to store and display. Oh well, we'll figure that out when we get to it. So what do you guys do when you've finished painting your miniatures? Do they go on a shelf for display? Do you just put them away in storage? They can go in my drawer. Now before we get to the final reveal, I just want to show you something interesting on this Leviathan box. Not this bit of fluff here, I thought that was a spider. Turn it the right way up. Where is it? Ah, down here. Join the community. If you read it down here, it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, William. Now, if you are enjoying the content on the channel, then please consider joining us on Patreon, the link to which is in the description below, or up here somewhere. Now let's have a little look at the finished article, shall we? So here it is, the Tyranid Screamer Killer. It's a glorious miniature, and the first Tyranid I've built for quite some time. I was genuinely impressed with this kit, as it has no major join lines or any nasty mould lines to clean up. The instructions were clear and concise, and I had no trouble whatsoever putting it together. The only issue is figuring out where to store it. My next job will be to tackle the base, which I shall do off camera, and then we will be painting it in the next video. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a nice old hammer throwback. I cannot wait to get that painted. If you want to see some more videos in this Tyranid painting series, check out the link up here somewhere. And as always, thank you very much for watching.